Okay. So the I think I don't have it here, but yeah. So we were trying to print this pattern, right? Um one into one equal to one, then two into one equal to two, so on. And here one into two, so on, right? Up to ten. Sorry, one into ten. Here it should be one into ten. Yes. So let's do this. So see, <clears throat> if you look at the first row, first row is one into one, two into one, three into one. Clearly, when you look at this, we have to use two for loop. Correct? One for outer, one for inner. One for left side and one for right side. Correct? So how do you give for loop? So you have to say for i in range. Correct? For i in range. And then you give starting value 1, right? And ending value 11. So it will go up to 10. So range will generate value from 1 to up to 11, right? From 1 to up to 11. And we have not given increment, okay? So you can give increment as 1. But when you have increment of 1, then it's not required, right? So starting from 1, go up to 11. Not 11, but up to 11. So I give for i in range. So, okay, so this is one aspect. Now, if you see here, your outer is changing, right? Outer is becoming 1, 2, 3, so on. Inner is remaining fixed, okay? So if I write a for loop here, inner for uh, loop, j in range, 1, 11, okay? Now, in these two, okay, which will be changing fast? I will be changing fast or j will be changing fast? J will be changing fast. J is inside. So one outer loop is like 10 loops of inner. Then one more outer loop will be 10 loops of inner. So J is changing faster, running faster, right? So here, which is running faster? The left side value is running faster. So you print F for mat. You give J, right? J into I. Okay? equal to j into i. Done. That's it. Okay. Now, when you run this, okay. Now, one more thing. Hold on. Okay. Let's run this and see what happens first. Okay. So, if you go to the beginning, so 1 into 1 equal to 1, right? I give space here. So, let's give space here as well. So 1 into 1 equal to 1, 2 into 1, 3 into 1, so on, right? But this has to print it in same row. So I'm going to say end equal to, right? So end equal to space. So when I give end equal to space, it will print in the same line. And once you're done with one row, okay, that's when you need to change back to the next line. So once I'm done with J, before I goes for next round, I will say print blank. Okay. So this is what you'll get, isn't it? 1 into 1, 2 into 1, 3 into 1, so on. Right? Well, how can you keep range 10? Okay. If you keep range 10, then you have to say J plus 1. J plus 1 into I plus 1. Yes, you can do that. Okay. Now you see here, this is not in correct order, right? Like, see, 1 into, if you look at 1 table, it looks good. Okay. But when you look at 2's table, what happened? 2 in, two is starting from here. It should be exactly below each other, right? So to make it exactly below each other, what should you do? To put it exactly below each other, what should we do? We need to give spaces, right? Now, J will range from single digit to double digit. So, I'll give colon and I will say 2, right? I want to fix 2 spaces and be left aligned. So, see, after giving a variable, you give colon and right of colon, you give formatting. Right? You can format float value, you can format. So here I'm formatting spaces. 
So to format spaces, you need to give number of spaces that, that you want to reserve. So I'm saying J should take two spaces. And when you assign two spaces, like first one, J is only one. So should it be left aligned or right aligned? So I'm saying less than. Less than means go to the left, left aligned. Okay. Similarly, I will also go up to two places. So I can put I colon left aligned to. Okay. This can go up to three places, right? So I can say left aligned three. Okay. Now when you see, see, they are exactly below each other. Right? If you don't want to give spaces, it's fine. Okay. You can delete these spaces. Okay. But um, here, instead of one space, let me give two spaces so that, you know, you can clearly see. Yeah. So see, this is like your table. One. This is two's table. And you get 10's table. Right? So this is how you can generate this table from 1 to 10. Why middle? Now, let's say I for I, I give right align, for example. So this will be this side aligned. So you can play with it. You can play with it. But that doesn't matter, right? This this is what is important, right? Alignment, you can see, and based on that, you can change it. Oh, I need to give space here. I need to do this. You can always do that. But what is important is J into I, not I into J. Yes. Hold on. Okay. First of all, question is about for loop. If question is about for loop, focus on only for loop. Why did you don't compare while loop and for loop? Okay. The question itself says, like, why does this happen in for loop? See, they are all different, right? We three of us are sitting here. All three are different. We all all different, right? So you cannot compare one with another. See, the reason they are we have one is for one is while because they are different. If they were same, we would have used same thing, right? So they are different. Don't compare anything. Okay. Do not compare. They are different. Okay. The way for loop is used is different. The way while loop is used is different. The purpose of for loop is different. Purpose of while loop is different. Now you ask me the question. So question here is, I changes automatically. Hmm. S equal to zero, let's say. Okay. When we run the for loop, no, in this case, it will not change. So if you come out and if you print S value, okay, if I say S equal to, the S will remain S. See, it will change when you make it change. See, S is zero only, right? You have to make, you have to make somewhere. If I make S equal to S plus one, right? Or what is the shortcut? S plus equal to 1. This is same as s equal to s plus 1. Now see what happens. s is 0 and this j is going to change it. How many times j loop is going to run? 10 into 10, 100 times. So s will be 99 because 0 to 100 or 0 to 100, it is 100, right? So because you have put s here, s is changing, isn't it? Whatever, 99 or 100, because you have put s here. So s is changing here because you have put s plus 1. S, S will not change automatically. Because you are putting, see, it will change in while also. Why will not change in while? Whenever you hit this statement, this will change. Whenever you hit this statement, this will change. Now, instead of S equal to, I mean, this one, if I, instead of putting inside J, if I put inside I, then what will the value? 10. 
right yes so it it will change based on where you put and how you do it it doesn't matter whether it is while loop or for loop if you put s equal to s plus 1 in while loop it will change there also it should change see if you hit this line this will change if you don't hit this line this will not change simple right when you define a variable s equal to s plus 1 the moment you touch it the moment you execute it it will change if you don't execute it, it will not change. Doesn't matter whether it's for loop, while loop, or no loop at all. If it is con if condition doesn't matter, it should change. Right? Okay, because nothing happens automatically. Okay. Now in this case, i and j will change automatically because that's the property of range and for loop. Right? Range will increase the value and for loop will make sure i takes one value at a time every iteration so i and j is changing because of the properties of for loop and range otherwise simple variable will change yeah all right shall we move to while okay so what i'll do is i'll move this program to a different file and we will come back to our Okay, so we'll talk about while loop today. Okay, today our focus is while loop. Okay, what is a while loop? When do we use while loop? We don't know how many times to run a loop, right? We don't know how many times to execute, but there has to be, <laughs> sorry, there has to be some condition, right? You have to have some idea, right? So, yes. So, for example, okay, um, I want to print. Um, okay, so let's take your doubt, what you asked, and I'm going to make some kind of for loop here, while loop here. So let's say I'm going to say num equal to one, right? Now, while, okay, this is the syntax of while loop. While should be followed by either true or false. So we discussed about Boolean, true or false. We discussed about logical operator, which will return into true or false, right? So you can use logical operator here. You can use Boolean operator, right? You can use comparison operator. Anything that will return us true or false, okay? Comparison operator can also will also return true or false, right? Okay, so let's say I give here ch choice equal to small y right so you have num equal to 1 ch equal to small y now while ch equal to small y right so ch is equal to small y this becomes true because we have assigned value ch y here and now i'm checking ch equal to y right and now you say num plus equal to 1 right and after this what i'll do i will ask the user ch equal to input input is to get the value from the user right and by default this will read as string data type okay so i'm saying input enter your choice okay enter your choice now this is how we are going to read the value from the user right okay simple right and i'll say enter your choice or instead better would be enter y to continue or any other key to stop okay and once you're done with while loop here i'm going to say print num equal to and num now how many times this loop will run as long as we want it okay in this case we are putting y as long as we keep on putting y this is going to run otherwise this is not going to run right it'll stop so let's run it enter y to continue any other key to stop so i'll say small y okay so ch is y it went inside num became num plus one so one plus one two and now it's asking me so i said y if it is y again it went up right so now what's the value of num? 2 plus 1, 3. Now again, it's asking me, continue. So num is 3, remember. Okay? 
and again i will say why so it went up again this is true comes back now it is 4 now ch i gave nothing you know i hit any other key right so if i hit any other key then it will go up again because that's the in, that's how the loop works goes up ch is not equal to y and then that's when it will come out of the while loop right so num is 4 because we are changing four times we are hitting it three times basically it has one value and then we are hitting it three times right so this is how um ch uh, sorry the while works okay where you have a condition here and if that condition is false that's when it will stop otherwise it will go on and on and on and on and forever okay okay so let's write a program here we'll create a menu option okay while loop is uh, mostly used to create menu options okay so let's create a menu option okay where we will have multiple options okay and uh, user has to choose which option and based on the option we will uh, perform that operation so i'll move this again here now let's look at example two here we call it as menu option or something like this okay so i'm going to print here let's say addition okay now i'm going to print subtraction multiplication and division and option five is quit so two three four five and i'll make this as quit okay here i'll say division here i'll say multiplication and here i'll say subtraction right okay so these are four options five options right including quit now I'll put this in a while loop. So I'll put a while and I can directly say true instead of writing why did we put ch equal to y and then checking again. Instead you can directly say while true. Okay. And we will stop when option. So we know right how to stop a while loop. Last time we discussed using break. Using break you can stop it right. So now I'm going to ask the user enter your choice ch okay or choice equal to input of enter your option from the above menu right now see purposely i'm not changing this into integer why we are we, we want one two three four five correct but are we using any kind of arithmetic operator here like greater than equal to plus we are not using all those things so there's no need to change it into integer okay we are just going to compare if ch equal to y we'll compare it like a string only right so i'm going to say here if c choice equal to one if switch equal to one then I will write pass for now. I'll come back and add my logic later, right? Pass is a placeholder, right? When you don't have to add any, you don't have to write anything in a block, you give pass. Just a placeholder. So I'm saying pass. I'll come back and add my logic later. Then elif choice equal to two, let's say. Okay, pass. Elif choice equal to three okay pass elif choice equal to four pass elif choice equal to five pass okay five is done then else else i'll put print invalid option try again right 
So now let's run this and see what happens. Loop starts, you have five options. I'll say one. So one will perform whatever we write here and comes back to the beginning of the loop. Okay, now I say quit five. Okay, so five should have quit. Now, what if, if I give something other than one to five? Let's say I give T. Okay, it says invalid option, try again. Six, invalid option, try again, right? It goes on forever until we come out of it. Anyway, we have not given the code for quit. That's why it's still running. Otherwise, we could have stopped it. Now, when you get into infinite loop like this, there is no way to come out from the program. You can go and stop this, or you can say Control C. Okay, or Control F2. Control C, break, Control F2, or you just press this red button. Okay? Okay. Now, easiest is the fifth one. Okay, so what should I write here? If choice equal to five, what should I give? Break. Simply break, right? Break will throw you out of the loop, isn't it? We just want to come out of the loop. So you say break here. Okay. Now let's go back and add logic for addition subtraction. Okay. So one option is, okay, um, you read the value before choice. Okay. You read the value before choice. I can say a num1 equal to int of input of enter first number correct and i can say num2 int enter second number right now you see where should you add this depends upon the logic should we add this before menu option? Should we add this within each of these options, one, two, four, five? Now see, if these are the two statements that will be common for one, two, three, four, then does it make sense to repeat it four times? It doesn't make sense to repeat it four times. Okay, you can either write it here. Okay, while true, enter first number, second now. And then you can say um, print now pick up the option. Okay. Now, the problem with this is let's say I run it. So it says enter first num. I say five. Second num, let's say four. Now pick up the option. Okay. And I say nine or zero or whatever what happens enter your option again and it again is asking me to re-enter the numbers this is not right isn't it because we already have the number it should not be asking me again and again and again right so what do we do so two options here one option is you can put it two while loop one loop will repeat this and second loop will repeat these options. Okay. And if you get this wrong, only this second one should be repeated, not the entire stuff. Right? Correct or not? Right? So because it depends upon, again, I told you, it, it totally is driven by the business objective. What is your objective? You want to input this value only once and keep performing all these operations multiple times. Then one loop will be done and these inputs should be outside the while loop. If your option is to keep taking the value again and again. Okay, for what I'm trying to say is, I'll put this outside. Okay, I'm putting it outside, let's say. And here I'm saying, okay, Pick up the, you know, pick up the option. Okay, quit. And if this is the case, then I'm going to say print addition of given numbers. Okay. And I'll say num1 plus num2. Okay. And I'll go and I'll let me put it at all these four places. 
Okay. Now I'm going to change it to subtraction multiplication or division. So here you say num1 by num2, num1 into num2, num1 minus num2. Okay. So now here, okay, let me quit it, five. Okay. Now let's run it again. So here now it's asking me, and this is outside the while loop. Okay. So let's say I give eight and I give five. Now it's asking me the option. Okay. So I'll say six. So when I say six, invalid option, try again. Right. Now it did not ask me to numbers because we have given it outside the loop. Okay. So I give one. Okay. Perfect. It gave me addition. I can give two. I can give three. I can give four. Okay. So you get 1.6. But what happens? Now I can't change the number, isn't it? I can't change the number. Number is fixed. Right. So now what I can do here is I'll put this as another while. Okay. Okay. But instead of that, okay, what I want to do is I'm going to check here. Okay. If the option is one or two or three or four or five. Right? How do I do that? Instead, if I can convert into integer. If I convert into integer, now I will check. If choice is greater than equal to one or choice is less than equal to four. If choice is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 4, that means if the choice is either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, then you do this. Right? And you can have, now see here, since I've converted into integer, now this uh, string is not valid. I have to convert into integer form. I have to pick this four inside this. This is a sub loop. Okay, one second.
resume recording. Okay, so we are having these two input here. Now these two inputs should work. Okay, only when choice is between one and four. Now, unlike last time where it was not required for us to convert into number because we are checking for one, two or three or four. Here we are checking, is it between one and four? So that's why we converted that input value into integer, right? So now when you know it is this, now inside again, see now these are your integer values. So I need to remove double quotes, right? And to remove double quote, remove double quote, right? So, or I can say else here. I don't have to say else choice so because it is anyway between one and four only. So if it is not one, two, three, then by default, last one will be four only. So I can do else here, right? Oops. Okay. Right, now we'll do here. What if choice is one or four, do this. Otherwise, choice if equal to five, then you break, okay, else invalid and try again. Okay, now in this case, now let's run it and see what happens, okay? First, we'll say quit, quit is five. Okay, let's run it. So now you see, it's asking us to give an option. Now, if I give something like this, eight, okay, so what happened? It, it, yeah, it should not, right? What happened, let's see. So, okay, it's coming here. Enter your option from above menu. And we said eight. Choice can be eight, but first number should not come, right? If choice is greater than one or choice is less than equal to four. Yeah, it is, okay, it is less greater than four. 8 is greater than 1, right? So it is true or false. True or false will be true only. Correct? So this will remain true for every condition. What we want? We want both conditions to be true. We want both conditions. We want choice to be more than 1. At the same time, we want choice to be less than 4. Okay? So here what happened? This was true and this was false. So true or false will return true only. That's why even if you give option eight, it went in. Okay, so I'll force stop and run it again. Now let's put eight and see what happens. Invalid option, try again, right? So if I give zero, same thing. Invalid option, try again. Now if I give three, okay, now it's telling me to enter first number, okay? Yeah if condition okay five and six now option i'll say one now you see here i gave option three right so first term second num and multiplication is 30. again asking me one to eight okay here i'll give two subtraction enter number six and five you get one it goes on okay so this is how you will use your while option correct and again as i said this is one way of doing things you this will change based on your objective what you want to achieve finally okay so we'll do one more program and we will end our discussion but before we do that program Let's develop a mini project. Let's play a game. Right? We'll call this as Guess the Number Game. Okay? Let's develop this Guessing the Number Game. So here you say num equal to 50. Okay? And I'm saying guess equal to 25. Okay, so the actual number is 50 and you're guessing 25. So if num equal to guess, then what happened? Congratulations, right? Okay. You 
guessed it right. Okay. Else, we will say print incorrect guess. Correct? Simple game, right? Now, we'll say quit five years. Okay. Now, so you say incorrect guess, right? Now, let's make it recursive. That means you keep, you, you know, you keep checking, okay, until you get it right, right? So number will be outside. Guess should be inside the loop, okay? Now, I'll say guess equal to int of input. Enter or guess the number, okay? I'll say guess the number. Guess the number. Okay. Run it. And if I guess it as 50, you get it, right? If you don't get it, okay, 51, you get incorrect guess. Okay. Now I want to run this in a loop. Which loop should I use? Why not for? Ah, so for loop will also continue it, right? But we don't know how many times, isn't it? Yes, you can guess it right in first attempt or it can take you second attempt or third attempt to guess. We don't know when to when, right? So, so this is where your for loop should be here, right? Your for loop should be or while loops, right? Should be here because this number is fixed once and this is going to be your, every time you have to, Keep asking the user. Okay? Correct. Right. And since we don't know, we'll put while true. Mostly, I'm not saying always. 80 to 90%, you will have while true only. 80%. 20%, you will have some conditions to check. Okay? So while true, now I want to keep doing it, right? So if I run it, guess the number. I'll say 54, it says incorrect, guess the number. 45, incorrect, guess the number. 50, you get it right. Now, once you get it right, it should break, isn't it? So we have to put break here because you got it right. And that's when you should stop. Okay, now let's let's add one more condition to it. Let's make, um, let's make it a little more helpful. So else make yeah, it's saying incorrect guess, right? Instead of incorrect guess, let's... Tell us, let's tell the user that the guess is higher or lower so that you get an idea. Should I think of a higher number or a lower number, right? So here I will say, okay, elif, okay, three conditions. One is equal to, other should be num is less than guess. If num is less than guess, then what should we say? We should say your guess is higher try with a lower guess right and here i'll say else your guess is lower try with a higher guess right so now when you run it Guess the number, I say 45. Your guess is lower, try with a higher guess. Okay, I say 90. Your guess is higher, try with a lower. I say 50. Perfect, congratulations. Now, why don't we count how many attempts you take? Okay, so I will say here, attempt equal to zero. Okay, zero attempt. And here I'll say, congratulations, you guessed it right in so many attempts right so many attempts so i'll put f here and i'll put attempt here okay so attempt is zero it will print zero always right i need to increase it where should i increase it every time you're guessing you're, you're lacking making an attempt isn't it so this is the right place to increase the attempt. Every time you are guessing, you are increase, you are making an attempt. So actually, it should be right immediately after guess. 
right? You make a guess, now attempt is one. You make another guess, attempt is two, right? So when you run here, guess a number, 30. Okay, your guess is lower, try a higher. I say 50. Say, oops, what happened? Right. Plus equal to, plus equal to, right? Attempt plus equal to, right? So if I say 80, okay, now 50, you guessed it right in two attempts. Is it right? No, it should be two, isn't it? Yes, plus equal to, yes. So you guys should catch this, right? Okay, now it will work, right? Okay, now let's make it even more interesting. How? Here we are saying 50. So we know it is 50. Okay, let me make it interesting. Okay. <clears throat> yes, we'll use random number. So I'm saying guess the number game, computer versus human. Computer to think and human to guess. Okay, so you have a module. Okay, it's called module. What is module? Module is a file. Okay, ultimately it is just a file, py file. It's just like a program, just like this p11. Okay, which will have set of functions. So module has collection of I'm writing here. You don't have to write it. You, you have it here. Has collection of related functions. Okay. So it's like you put, see, we have been using so many functions till now. We have used int, input, whatnot, right? All these are available in as a public accessibility. That means you don't have to access any module. It is pre-built, pre-imported. We have used it but we have so many we have we have thousands of functions we have thousands of functions now it's not possible to attach all the thousand functions in your file what happens your your program becomes slow it's like you are going for a vacation for two days if you're going for a vacation for two days you won't carry everything with you right you'll carry the things which is required for you to carry so those are like print input int these are functions which are very often used. So they say, oh, these are very often used. Let's attach it to the main program so that you don't have to import all these modules. But there are some modules, so there are some functions, there are some functions which are used in special scenarios, not always, right? So we have a module called random. So random is a file name. It has a lot of functions in it. These functions, are used to handle random numbers. These functions are used to handle random numbers. So they say that, okay, we have about 10 random number functions. These functions, you don't play with random numbers every day. You don't play with random numbers every day. You say, okay, whenever you want random number, you call, whenever you want to work with random number, you call, you call a random module all those functions will be available for you to use. Okay. So how do you call? We say import random. Okay. So again, see, there are two types of module. One type of module is, which is downloaded, installed, available, but not accessible without import. So random number is already downloaded. When we install Python, it is already downloaded. It is there, but it is not accessible. You have to call it. Okay, you have to call it. And there are some modules which are not even downloaded, which is available, which are again like advanced modules. Okay, advanced modules. Now, because if you download everything, your Python file will run into GBs. You have to download all so many GBs of file. What, yeah, so it says you, do, you don't need, if you're working with web development, you install only web development related module. You're working data analytics, download only data analytics related module, right? So we will talk about pandas and uh, numpy later, which you have to install it. So those will get installed 
and then use it like import. Random is downloaded, but not attached to our file. So we have to call it. So I'm going to say import random. When I say import random, okay, and now you do here random dot, okay. These are all functions here. Choice, random, random int, sid, choices. These are all numbers, okay. We'll see today only rand int. So rand int is a function that will give us a random number. Rand int is a function which will give us a random number between given values. So if I say 1 comma 100, it will give me an integer number, random integer number between 1 and 100, both inclusive. That means 1 can also come, 100 can also come. Any number, be, any number between 1 and 100. Okay. So here I'll copy this. Okay. So rand int, okay, will return random integer number between 1 and 100, okay, both including, okay. So what I'll do, I'll move this to num equal to 50. Now we really don't know what is the num value. Now the fun will begin, right? Now let's run it and see what happens. Guess the number. Okay, guess the number. Give me a number. 45. Your guess is higher. Try with a lower guess. You keep playing. Now see, this. we are reading it only once, right? So it is there, okay? So, so guess is lower than 45, right? So now you guess a lower value, 21. When it is equal to, you will come to know, right? You'll get congratulations message. When you get this message, that means you got it right. Yes or no? It is even lower. I lower, how can you say 30? Okay, say 10. Oh, it is even lower. Okay, 5. It is even lower. 2. Let's see. It is even lower. 1. This has to be correct, right? Guess is even lower. How is that possible? Did we get it wrong? I think so. Your guess is lower. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Oh, your number is low. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. You, you, okay, you're right. Oh, it is. Uh, guess is lower, right? Number is higher. So you should say 30. Correct. Okay, your guess is higher. So it is between 21 and 30. So we'll say 24 and see what happens. Guess is lower. So 25, 24. So it is not 24, it's not 30. 26, lower. So 28. Yeah, so it was 28. Okay, so we took 10 attempts to guess. Right? This is a mini game. Right? So we okay, so it's really not 10 attempts, right? Let's play it again. I want to let's let's play it okay, one more time. Guess the number. We'll start with 60, let's say. Higher. So think of a lower number. Let's say 30. Higher. Okay. So we'll say 15. Guess is lower. Okay. So between 15, so we'll say 25. Guess is lower. So uh between 25 and 30, right? So 27, guess is higher, 26, okay. So it took us six attempts. And last time also it took us about six attempts. If you remo remove those wrong attempts, so it is taking about five to six to seven, eight attempts, okay, it will take, okay. So this is, okay, game, okay. So now this is what we say, computer versus human. So computer has thought of the number and we are guessing it. Right now, let's change it. Okay, I'm going to save this version now. Change it so that it's computer versus computer. No, see, it is same. No, if you get it here, that means it's the same value. No, if you want to print num, then you will be able to see it. Right, then what's the point of guessing? Guessing means you don't know. Right, if mentally, if you know it's 28, then we are simply playing with 28. 
this is real game right you don't know we want to do it in as less number as possible as no as less attempt as possible right okay now let's change it now we'll say computer versus computer let's let's make computer play with computer okay so instead of making guess equal to this okay what we'll do we will say random equal to random int and see what happens guess pe to hai guess pe laga rahe na ha okay so now computer is guessing the game okay now let's run this and see what happens 148 attempts 13 attempts 387 attempts talking about see it takes 387 attempts that is my question how is it possible 256 attempts tell me how is it possible tell me you know did we get anything wrong here what is what is that we got wrong so see here when we were playing when it said high it is lower than the guess guess number is lower if you give 60 and it said guess number is lower than 60 then we would never use 60 or more than 60 number isn't it in this case it will still go because we have just said random int 1 to 100 so it's possible that it would be guessing higher than if it is, even though it says that it's not higher even then it's a, you give 60 it says your number is lower but still you'll get 70 and and when you say you have only 1 to 100 you're guessing 200 times one for that means you're guessing same number again and again also right so this is really not how we play right so this program is not correct what should happen is okay to begin with it should be 1 and 100 but later this number should change based on these conditions ill elif and else condition so initially you can say low comma high okay low comma high equal to 1 and 100 let's say okay and i'll put low and high here now what happens you see here when it says your number is less than guess your number is less than guess let's say you said 60 and yes it says your number is less than 60 that means next time you sh 60 and above 60 and also because 60 is also wrong so you should go to 59 only that means your high should become high minus one isn't it high should become high minus one or high minus equal to one your high should become less yeah if it's 60 it should be less than 60. is it high minus one no it should be guess minus one right high is 100. so if i say high minus one it become 99. it should be guess minus one because guess is what you are saying 60 not high high is 100. so high minus one will be 99 98 no not that we should say guess minus one guess is 60 then it should be 59 maximum and same thing when it is lower now your low should become guess plus one if i say 15 it's a value is more than 15 that means next time i sh i should not think of anything less than 16. okay now let's play and see see nine attempts six attempts very similar to what we took right six seven eight attempts six attempts very similar to two attempts you can you know very similar to what we did right okay this is how you play game now um there's one more uh, command called continue there is one more command called continue. Continue is break is throw you out from there. 
continue is also used in loop continue will take you to the beginning of the loop you are still inside the loop but it will take you to the beginning of the loop okay so for example yeah Ah, uh -huh, yes, you can say, no, here, your guess. Instead, you can put this here, right? And you put F here. So now you know what your guess is, right? Or you print it directly here, guess. You can print it here or you can do it here, correct? Uh oh, this is, okay, this is human, right? Okay, so we can copy and paste it, same thing here. Okay, we'll change this, uh, this program also here. Guess, guess, put F. So now it will display the guess values, right? Okay, now let's go to this human program, okay? Computer versus human. So let's say you run it, okay? You run it. Okay, now I'm guessing the number as minus 45. The value is between 1 and 100. I'm saying minus 45. Okay, so when it is minus 45, okay, then I don't want to go further. I want to go back to the beginning because, see, value has is between, let's say the value is between 1 and 100. Then why do you want to guess something which is less than 1 or greater than 100, right? So what we'll do here, okay, if guess is this, now I don't want to make count the attempt also. So I'll say if guess is less than 1 or guess is greater than 100. Print invalid, okay, guess try again and you put continue so when you say continue it will not go beyond here it will go up only even your attempt will not be counted okay now I see here now, should it be or or and here or because if value more than 100 or one less than both conditions should be true right so yes so now if you run this program, okay, and if I put guess as 500, it says invalid guess. 200, invalid guess. Minus 100, invalid guess. Now these three attempts are not counted because attempt is done, done after continue. You see, none of these got executed. It did not say your guess is higher or lower, right? Because continue will take you to the beginning of the loop. Break will throw you out of the loop. Continue will take you to the beginning. So the moment is a continue, you will not go below. You will go to the beginning of the loop. So now if I guess the number 45, now it goes below. It says 45 is higher. Okay. Machine will always guess between 0 and 1. Yes. Okay, so this is how you can play this game here. Okay, now I want to see. So you can like you can give it maybe ten thousand or something, right? Here also we'll give it ten thousand, right? Now you can see how many attempts it takes. P eleven. 26 attempts, right? Not bad, right? Because 1 to 10,000 also. Now, you want to know how much time it takes to execute this program. Okay? Then how do we do? I want to know how much time it takes to, to run the program. Now, if I want to see how much time you take to run a program or how, many, how much time do you take to do a task, how do you measure the time? You measure the start time, 
then you should do the work then you measure the end time right now if you do the difference okay i started doing work at 320 and finished work by 325 so 325 minus 320 five minutes is the task right so we have another model called time we're going to import time and we'll have a discussion later okay after we are done with functions we'll talk about how to create our own module and things like that we'll have detailed discussion there so here i can say start equal to time dot time okay and your end sorry and your end is okay end is here right before you break correct so here it is your end time and let's write it in the terms and in so many seconds this gives you result in seconds so you will say end minus start ah so just before printing right you need end value right that's that's when we end actually correct you see it takes zero to zero second because it is so fast it is your program is so super fast right it is not in fact you know this is going to read up to point sixth decimal place of time it is faster than six decimal place also okay i don't know maybe if i make add few more zeros because we have given low high right it is quickly is able to uh, you know reduce the range okay this also you know Low. yes then then probably it will take hours also <laughs> right so yeah this is how you measure okay when you, you can try this in a loop for loop okay it'll work okay let's make it 100 only okay so with that we finish our loop discussion any questions any question no yes maybe let's put it here yes it is all about practicing no doubt okay and see i told you right practice doesn't mean that you will always get it right you see the output it can be wrong it will be wrong first time then you go and fix it you should learn from the error message you learn from the output okay that's what will tell you what to do so you should learn from the output and change it okay okay write a program guys okay write a program to generate prime numbers from one till user uh, user continue to ask continue to ask so what i mean is it should print like number okay it should print like two and you want more you say yes it will say three then it will say you want more you got it what i'm saying it should say five you want more okay you should say uh, seven right you want more say 11 you want more now you say n or nothing whatever okay and it should say thank you so prime number still here so you keep saying yes 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 it should give you next 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 value okay the moment you say no or you hit any other killer than y it should stop and say thank you right so okay so you do this after some time now we'll start talking about strings okay what are strings
Let's go to different page. I'm going to say strings. So what are strings? Text values, right? So, so far what we have seen is you can define a text using single quote. You can define a string using double quote. Okay. Now, there is no difference at all. There is no difference at all between this one or this one. There is no difference between this one or this one. Okay. Single quote, double quote, absolutely no difference. Only thing you have to keep in mind is whatever you start here. If you start with single quote, you have to end with single quote. If you start with double quote, you have to end with double quotes. That's the only thing you have to keep in mind. There is otherwise no difference between them. You can also declare or you can also use string using triple quote. Okay. The triple quote is also used as multi-line comment. Right. Although you also use multi. -line. So it's like you are creating a text, but you are not using it. Comments are like a text string only string, but you are not using it. So if you de declare a text and don't use it, that becomes a comment. Isn't it? Now here I'm saying, how are you? Right. I can use triple double quote. I am fine. You can use triple single quote. You can use triple double quote. Okay. Now, there is no difference between line number four and five. Between triple quotes, there is no difference. Between single and double, there is no difference. But between these two, there is a difference. What is the difference? Okay. Now, if I have to do print type of, let's say, type of str. One comma str two comma str three str four four three two one okay you can even say print str one slash n slash n is for new line now I'm saying str two so str two will be printed in different line str3 okay slash n print in different line str4 it'll print in different line right now when i run it what happened because it's running different file p2 run p2 so you see string 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 all for our string and since we gave um, here you see hello hi there how are you it printed in same line there's just space here why Comma will always give a space. Comma, when you do, okay, see here also there's a space. Comma will automatically add a space. So that's why there's a space here. If you want, you can give a space here too, you know, just in case if you want to give. Okay, fine. So there is no difference between 1, 2, and 3, and 4. There's a difference between single and triple quote. Difference is these are your multi line text. What it means, I can say, how are you? You know, where are you? How are you doing? Okay. You can give multi-line text here. I am fine. I am here. I am great, whatever. Right? You can give multi-line. And when you print it, it will be printed as if you are printing multi-line. You see, how are you? Where are you? How are you doing? It got printed. So S3... And S for a string str3 and str4 are multi-line text. You can write entire story here. Okay, within triple quote. That is the main difference. I cannot give multi-line when I give single quote or double quote. This is always one line. This is one line text. Okay. This is also one line. This is your multi-line. Okay, this is again your multi-line text. That is the difference between single quote and double quote. Right? Okay. Now, let's say I want to print something like this. Print. 
Okay, so before I write, I want you to think and tell me. I want to print like this. Slash n is used for new line. I want to print as it is. If I want to print something as it is, what happens? Control C, Control V, you run it, what will happen? Since slash n is for new line, it gave us a new line, isn't it? Blank line. But I want to print this. Two. Okay, so we have something called as scape character, scape sequence, scape character. The backslash is called scape sequence or scape character. E is scape character. Okay, this is how I remember. Okay, how I remember escape character is this will add power. Okay, okay, it will add super power or it will remove power. This will add power if you do not have power and it will remove power if you have power. Okay. I'll tell you what. Okay. What it means. Now you see, N is a simple character. So when I run it, <laughs> when I run it, N is used for new line, correct? But moment you add this scape character, what happens? It has got a power, super power. Simple character N became a new line. Simple character T becomes tab. So if you have power, if you do not have power, N did not have power, it added a power. Okay, this is not how you answer. Okay, this is just to remember. Okay, so when I do backslash for N, N became special. If I do backslash T, T will become special. Slash T. So T will give you tab number of spaces, more number of spaces, right? So, okay, so it get power. Now, if I add one more, so it removes that power. So two backslashes will become one backslash. So backslash is giving power, okay? So I add one more backslash. So this backslash will remove the power of previous backslash. Okay, so if I now say slash n, now you see these two slash n becomes one and it is n. So slash n no longer power. And this works only on one character, not multiple characters. Backslash works only on the immediate character. But not always, like say slash c may not have anything. In that case, it does it will it will not have any, you know, like not all characters have special meaning not all characters slash n is something that we use very often okay so you have backs so because of which what happens two slashes will make one slash two slashes will make one slash two slashes will make one slash Backslash, only backslash, yes. <laughs> Correct. If it has meaning only, it will do that. Yes, exactly. Okay. So now, if I say slash n is used for new line, slash t, okay, is used for tab spaces. Okay, slash C has no meaning, for example. Okay, so you see, slash C has no meaning. But you can give double slash because slash has a meaning, isn't it? So two slashes will become. Okay, now let's say I want to print something like this. I want to print double slash N, double slash T, double slash C. How will I do it? Simply, I want to print this. How will I print? Because see, if I give double slash and double slash C, double slash C, I'll get only single slash, isn't it? Okay, so if I put triple, these two together will make one slash, but you still have slash N, which will give you new line. So 
two slashes mean will make one, right? So these together will make one, and these together will make one. So you have to give four. If you want two, you have to give four. If you want ten, you have to give twenty. Two slashes together because if you give three, first two together will make one. But now you are left with slash n. So slash n will give you new line. So two slashes will make one. So if you want two slashes, you have to give four. If you want ten slash, you have to give twenty. Okay, so file it will give double slash. Correct, because if your file name has n, let's say small n, not capital n. Let's say you have new folder with slash and new, then it will read it as new line, okay, not as slash n, and it will give you error that you know file not found or folder not found. Okay. Okay, so this is the code, and we will try to run this code and fix it. Okay, first of all, we don't know how many numbers user may want, correct? So we will put num equal to one, okay, initially, and we'll put a while true. Okay, we'll say while true. Okay, now num is one. We need to check if num is prime or not. If it is prime, that's when you need to print it and ask the question, right? So here I'm going to say while. How can you say while in range? It is for in range or while in range? Yeah, it has to be for in range, right? Not while in range. And here it is n by 2. Okay, so you are checking it. Okay, plus one. So we'll go half, halfway, right? We are checking. Okay, now we are assuming that number itself is prime. Okay, now this assumption has to be made before, right? Inside. So let's first check whether it's prime or not. So we will check if this num, okay, if this num, if this num modulo i, okay, we do it from zero because one will anyway will divide every number, right? So there's no point of dividing by two. I have to divide from two, three onwards. So if num divided by 2 is 0, then is prime is false, right? And then you break it. You want to break this loop. You don't want to continue any more in for loop. Okay? Now, <clears throat> now, see here. Now, if this is prime, you print this number is prime. Else what we do? You continue, right? So instead, what I'll do is I will say if is prime, right? And if not is prime, not is prime means if prime is false and not false will be true, correct? So I'll say continue. Then don't go below, just go up and redo entire thing from here okay now when you say redo entire thing this number should now be incremented by one right so anyway we know one is not a prime so we'll start from two to one words right okay now you see here when you have two here now see range two comma two by two is one plus one two from 2 to 2, it will not run. So instead, let's make it plus 2. Otherwise, 2 will not be taken into account. Okay. I'll show you what I'm what, why I'm doing it. Okay. It's not a prime continue. And if it is not, that means it is already a prime anyway. Right. So you print this num. And now you ask this question. Do you want more? Okay ch equal to 
input you want more and i'll say y for yes or something like that right okay so you say you want more and if ch okay not equal to y you break if it is y then you continue if it is not equal to y we break correct now this break will break the outer loop yes and let's run it and see what happens two okay two got printed you want more i'll say yes three yes five Yes, seven, yes, eleven, yes, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen. Nineteen is prime, right? Twenty-three, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-seven. See, the moment I hit anything else, it stopped. All right. So this is how you can generate this. Why I'm changing to two? Where? No, no, only it worked with one. I thought it will not work with uh, one. So it worked. Yeah. One is not a prime. One is not a prime. It it see the x okay um, one is not considered first number itself considered as two it starts with two okay so we don't consider one as prime you say one is neither prime nor composite if you see if you Google and see one is neither prime nor what is opposite of prime number? Composite number, right? So one is neither prime nor composite. Two is prime, three is prime, four is composite, five is prime, six is composite, seven is prime, eight is composite, nine is composite. Okay, so we'll stop here for today.